First of all, I want to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to present my research about uh, the topology of interactivity. There will be three parts in this lecture. The first part, um, in the first part I will define interactions between some open dynamics inside the so-called dynamical family. In the second part, we'll recall the notion of connectivity spaces and we'll see that uh, as multiple relations, interactions give rise to such spaces. In the third part, a locally Grothendieck topos is associated with each connectivity space. Then a sober topological space is associated with each finite dynamical family. In our conclusion, we'll stress that open dynamics of a finite dynamical family are represented by open points of a topological space whose other points represent some imaginary dynamics. Throughout the lecture, we'll consider as a reference an example of a Borromean interaction. So let's begin with the theory of dynamical family. We'll first give a short and intuitive, I hope, an overview of this theory. So to unify discrete dynamical systems and continuous dynamical systems, we can consider the composition of transition functions along durations as a common functorial property. In 1965, Madame Iresman thus considered dynamics defined as functors from a small category to the category of sets. Indeed, such a functor can be seen as a generalized dynamical system with a rows of the small category as durations, elements of images of objects as uh, states and image of durations as deterministic transition functions on states. For example, if the small category is the additive monoid of natural numbers, we recover discrete dyna dynamical systems. And with um, addition of real numbers, we obtain a class containing classical continuous dynamical systems. In our theory, a functor from a small category C to sets is called a deterministic closed dynamic or simply a clock on C. We'll make two extensions to this definition of closed dynamics as functors. First, we replace the category of sets by the category real of sets with binary relations as a rows, seen as non-deterministic transition functions. And secondly, we extend the definition again by considering as dynamics all lax functors from yeah, uh, in a deterministic case uh, with each state is associated one and only one state. And in the non-deterministic uh, case, you can have uh, one or zero or more than one state associated with it um, after uh, some duration. And uh, okay, so... Uh, this is the first extension. And uh, secondly, we extend the definition again by considering as dynamics all lax functors from our small category to the two category PY defined as uh, rel when ordering transitions by the opposite of the inclusion order, which we'll call the constraint order. Now uh, we can enrich the definition of closed dynamics to include some open dynamics that will be able to interact, to interact together. We do that thanks to parametrizations and to a reference to an internal clock in view of synchronizations. Behaviors of an open dynamic will be formalized as its realizations. Such a realization will be defined as a certain value of the parameter and the quasi-deterministic lax natural transformation from the clock to the open dynamic. We'll soon explain what this means. It's the uh, non-empty set of uh, par parameter values, and I will explain this. Uh, this is just a first uh, approach. Then a dynamical family consists of a family of open dynamics, an interaction between those dynamics, that is a multi-relation between all parameters and all realizations, and some synchronization between them. 
The fundamental theorem of this theory asserts that with each dynamical family can be associated uh, new global dynamics that incorporate in different ways the open dynamics of the family and that uh, these global dynamics can in turn interact with some other open dynamics. Uh, okay, I, I want to stress that uh, we wouldn't have this result with a too strict definition of open dynamics. This was one of our reasons for using lax concepts rather than strict. Can you explain what globally No, I, I won't, because I, I have no time to explain, but it's uh, a new open dynamic. I, it's a plural because uh, there are different ways to, to do that. Uh, so new open dynamics associated with all the uh, with all the family of dynamics and it's in a way it's expressed the the entire um, um, dynamic of of the system of the family um, so in summary uh, interactivity give ri give rise interactivity gives rise to multiple relations and uh, these multiple relations will be our front door to connectivity and then to uh, topology. I, I will give now um, the main definitions. Um, so, a dynamical family is the data of a non-empty index set, um, a family of open dynamics, an interaction between these dynamics. Sorry? Yeah, it's not again, it, it will be in the next slide. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, an interaction between the, 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 these dynamics, an element of the index set, and a family of synchronizations, uh, and we'll explain now uh, the, this. So, an open dynamic on a small category C and with a given non-empty parametric set L is the data of uh, an L multidynamic alpha on C that is a certain disjunctive lax functor. For, don't ask me what is a disjunctive lax functor. I will explain it. Uh, that is, uh, so a disjunctive lax functor from C to a certain two category PY raised to the L power on a rose. Uh, and um, a clock, H on C, and a deterministic dynamorphism from alpha to H called datation, with all these notions being defined in the following slides. So PY uh, denotes the two categories for which objects are sets of states, and morphisms are binary relations viewed as non-deterministic transitions, and two cells are given by the constraint order, that is the opposite of the inclusion order. And then uh, re replacing transitions by L families of transitions, we define the two category PY raised to the L power on the rows, which we'll call also PYL. Uh, and the lax functor from C to PYL is said to be disjunctive if the sets of states associated with two different objects of C are disjoint. The set of sets of alpha is then the disjoint union of the sets of states of different types. And the small, the small category C is then called the engine of the open dynamic and its arrows are called durations. And uh, a transition is said to be deterministic when it associates exactly one state to each state, and it's said to be quasi-deterministic when it associates at most one state to each state. A, di a dynamic is said to be deterministic if all its transitions are deterministic, and we define in the same way quasi-determinism. Um, a deterministic mono This? This? Yeah, phi, phi of u is a set. It is the set of states associated with u. And this set can be empty. In this case, this cardinal is zero. Yeah. Thank you. 
Um, so, um, a deterministic monodynamic that is with a parameter set that is a singleton is called a clock. It is just a functor from the engine to the category of sets, and the states of a clock are called instanced. Finally, we define different kinds, uh, different kinds of morphisms between dynamics and call them dynamorphisms. For example, if alpha and beta are multidynamics on the same engine C, a C dynamorphism from alpha to beta will be given by a map between their parameter sets and by a transition on their states that is lax natural for each parameter value. And in particular, the definition of an open dynamic contains a deterministic dynamorphism from its multidynamic to its clock called its dating function, which associates an instant with each state. So here we will recap the definition of open dynamics. We wrote the inclusions that uh, detail lax property, lax properties here. Sorry? You said engine. The engine. See, the. Yeah, it's. Uh, I define. I define uh, the engine of a uh, uh, dynamic as this uh, small category, C. Yeah. So errors of the engine are, are durations. And uh, okay, let's now define an interaction between some open dynamics. Uh, such an interaction is given as a multiple relation, namely by its graph that is a part of the product of all parameter sets Li and all sets Si, where Si denotes the set of external parts of non-empty realizations of uh, Ai, a notion that we'll define now. Uh, so um, we define um, a realization of an open dynamic as a quasi-deterministic dynamorphism from its clock to its multi-dynamics with a lax constraint that ensures that the date of the state of the dynamic at a given instant is this instant. And uh, so the, the, the parameter of a realization is called its internal part and the function that associates states with instance is called the external part of the realization. Finally, inside the dynamical family, a synchronization is a relation between instance of the different dynamics. Notice that a synchronization can use decreasing, uh, decreasing maps, that is to say that a dynamic can evolve in reverse time compared to another. Uh, and here we, we recap the definition of a dynamical family. And of course, uh, you, you, you'll see the, the slides on internet and uh, you'll have time to think about all this uh, stuff. So uh, as previously announced, the fundamental theorem of this theory ensures its systemic nature. Indeed, each dynamical family results in some global open dynamics. And uh, here, there's an example we take as a reference example, this open dynamic X, whose clock has only two instants, and whose parameter set L has two modes, denoted here A and B. In mode A, states stay unchanged, if we can say so, and in mode B, states are exchanged. Uh, so more precisely, we take an, as engine the small category with two objects and only one non-trivial row between them, and clock uh, states and transitions given as it is uh, written here. And there is no uh, interaction at this uh, stage. Okay, it's just one open dynamic. And here we recap uh, the, the definition of this uh, open dynamic. So, uh, and uh, before interactions, we have to precise uh, what is the set of uh, external parts of non-empty realizations of this 
dynamic. It contains two realizations that are defined only at uh, instant zero and uh, four realizations that are defined all the time, that is to say at instant zero and at instant one. So now uh, let's see an example of a dynamical family. Uh, we, uh, our reference dynamical family uh, will have um, uh, three uh, open dynamics that are identical uh, to our previously defined dynamic X and uh, with an interaction between them defined by the demand that at least one of the three parameter value is B. Okay, uh, now uh, let's talk about uh, our uh, connectivity, uh, about uh, connectivity spaces and in particular connectivity structures of interactions. Uh, let's recall that the connectivity space is given by a set of points endowed with a set of parts that we say to be connected with the only axiom that if some connected subsets have a common point, then their union is again connected. Notice that in general such a structure is not given by a topology. It is not given by a topology on the set of points in general. And among spaces with connected singletons, the simplest example of a connectivity space that is not given by a topology on its points is the so-called Borromean space, which has three points that are globally connected but not pairwise connected. The set of connectivity structures on a set of points is ordered by inclusion from the finest one, the discrete structure, to the coarsest one in which everything is connected. It is easy, it is easy to see that uh, this set of structures is a complete lattice and uh, uh, this has a fundamental consequence. Any set of subsets generates a connectivity structure that is the finest one containing the former. Connectivity morphisms are defined as maps that preserve connectivity. They send connected subsets on connected subsets. For example, if the plan is endowed with the connectivity structure generated by open disks, then the Newton fractal constitutes a connectivity morphism from this plan to the Borromean space because the image of each disk contains one or, th uh, or three values, but never only two values. Okay, now uh, let's talk about the connectivity structure of a multiple relation. Given an uh, index set I and a family of uh, sets indexed by it, a multi-relation is just a part of the product of this uh, family. This is a, a multi-relation. The, the set I can, can be infinite. And the connectivity structure of this uh, uh, multi-relation uh, is, is defined this, this way. Uh, um, we, 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 take, uh, uh, we, we, we say that uh, air is splittable uh, if uh, we can, uh, if, um, we can uh, uh, split. <laughs> split it and uh, uh, the connectivity structure consists just of subsets of I on which the multi-relation is not splittable. It's easy to, to check that this is, this is a connectivity structure. So uh, now uh, I give a, an example of uh, the uh, Bormian connectivity structure with a very well-known uh, multi-relation. Uh, that is the ternary relation on real numbers defined by addition. This is Borromean. This is Borromean because in this relation, coordinates are independent pairwise, but not globally. Since the interaction of a dynamical family is a multi-relation, we can associate now uh, to it a connectivity structure on the index set of the family. In fact, we can associate uh, different structures um, depending on the part of the relation we want to consider. In particular, we could uh, consider only its restriction to realization, to realizations. Anyway, uh, our previously given reference example of a dynamical family is Borromean, 
because in this interaction, the three dynamics are pairwise independent but are globally dependent. Let's now see how to connect connectivity and topology in this, uh, and, and this is our third part. To each connectivity space, we associate the Grothendieck topos of its sheaves. For that, we define a Grothendieck site endowing the category of connected subsets ordered by inclusion with a Grothendieck topology defined in, in this way, uh, a sieve on a connected set C covers it if the connectivity structure genera generated by this sieve contains all connected subsets of C. Uh, in the given uh, reference, I, I gave a construction to obtain a sober topological space given uh, any finite connectivity space and reciprocally to obtain a connectivity space in which points are not necessarily connected to themselves given any topological space, such uh, that these spaces are more equivalent. Uh, toposes of sheaves on finite connectivity spaces or on finite topological spaces are of pre-sheaf type. Uh, they are toposes of pre-sheaves on finite ordered sets. Uh, pre-sheaves, so it, it is with the interesting trivial topology. <laughs> if you want, the, the less constraining topology. So uh, on this figure, you have an example of a correspondence between a connectivity space left down here. This is a connectivity space with three points and uh, um, the, uh, this, uh, say, this says uh, what is connected. The first point is connected to the second point and the second to the third one. Uh, so uh, this is a connectivity space and uh, this is an order and this is a topological space and uh, uh, they uh, are all uh, Morita e equivalent. And uh, finally, to any dynamical family with a finite number of open dynamics in interaction, we can now associate the sober topological space that is Morita equivalent to the connectivity space associated with uh, this interaction. In fact, there are different spaces that can be defined in general, but we talk here about the main one. So uh, with our example, in the case of our, of our reference example of a dynamical family, we obtain a topological space with four points, including as open points, the three open dynamics of the family. In this example, the fourth point is closed, but in general, new points are neither open nor closed. And uh, uh, let's, let's take two minutes again to conclude. Uh, uh, first, uh, uh, we want to stress the interpretation of new topological points as kind of imaginary dynamics associated with connectivity, connectively irreducible subfamilies. And uh, secondly, we propose to look at finite topological spaces obtained this way by means of some topological interpretation. I will uh, explain. And uh, thirdly, we want to pose the problem of studying relations between the internal connectivity of the open dynamics, connectivity of the interaction, and connectivity of the new open dynamics produced by any dynamical family. So, uh, as I said, open dynamics are represented by open points. That is, that uh, contrarywise, if a closed dynamic comes in an interaction that is possible, uh, it, it won't, uh, in general, be represented by a closed point. And, uh, and as I said, irreducible connected subfamilies of the considered dynamical family constitute new, new points, in general, neither open or, or closed. Um, okay, to, to, to have a better intuition of finite topological spaces, we use some topological interpretations that we define this way. It has to be continuous, subjective, and to preserve by inverse image, closures, or interiors, or topological boundaries. For example, uh, you can see here a representation of our four points topological space by the Newton fractal, the fourth point being represented by the Julia set. 
So uh, question, what is the relation between those two morphisms, one connective, the other topological, with, uh, which both involve infinite, infinite spaces? And uh, I will finish my lecture with these uh, pictures issued from the Lorentz butterfly and the hope vibration and with the beautiful Grist's result about the existence of a kind of universal ordinary differential equation and uh, leaving the question of linking connectivity structures at the different structural stages uh, at which they appear. And uh, so uh, thank you for your attention and you will find uh, uh, some uh, references and uh, thank you. <laughs>